Welcome to Jeremiah Smith Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. Well, welcome to our worldwide church service. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you're with us today. How are you, are you excited today? Are you excited about the things of this week and this uh, coming year? Praise the Lord. Well, you should be. You know, God's got some wonderful things in store for you. Praise the Lord. And he has some wonderful things that he wants you to accomplish with your life. Amen. And uh, we're going to be talking about today vision. Praise the Lord. We've been talking about it for about two weeks. We're going to get into our third message on vision this week. And uh, usually I don't do series. Uh, our series on uh, uh, Sundays, but the Lord has led me to kind of get us ready for the uh, coming year. And so we're going to be focusing on vision, praise the Lord, and some other things too as we get into the beginning of this year. Uh, so I f- uh, the Lord's let, put it on my heart. So we're going to be talking about that today. I hope that you're doing good and I hope you're ready for the table that's spread for us today, praise the Lord. And, and uh, you know, you can catch us live every Sunday, every Wednesday. We're teaching on prayer on Wednesday nights. So you're welcome to us on prayer, and uh, which that goes right along with vision. So they kind of work really well to, uh, together and kind of correlate really well together. So, and uh, we've been talking about uh, in the prayer uh, sessions, we've been talking about praying the spirit. I think we have one more message on that. And then we're going to talk about different other types of prayers. But uh, very important stuff you can catch there too on Wednesday nights. So you're welcome to catch us on Wednesdays. And uh, we're live on Sundays and Wednesdays at uh, Sundays at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And uh, we're on Wednesdays at uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. So you're welcome to catch us live. Of course, if you can't catch us live, you know, you can catch us at any time you need to. Uh, we have all of our messages available and for you uh, on Podbeam. You can listen to us on Avenues. You can listen to us on, um, pulling it up there. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, Listen Notes, uh, Podbeam, like, and that's our home. Uh, you can also listen to us on TuneIn, off of Alexia, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Deezer. Uh, you can listen to us on Pandora. Pandora. <laughs> I say that wrong. Sometimes I apologize. Pandora. Uh, you can catch us on Amazon Music, uh, YouTube. So you're welcome to catch us on all those. Now you do see a lot of changes going on. We're getting ready for the new year and we're making changes, getting ready for the beginning of this next year to kind of uh, upgrade some things and make them a little bit better for you. Praise the Lord. Trying to make things better for our listeners. And so you're welcome to uh, you know tune into those places. And they have all of our old messages there. They should on each one of them have your old messages if they don't for some reason you can check another one out uh, podbean definitely does it has all of our old messages and they should always have our new messages in all these places too but uh, you're welcome to catch us there of course our new one uh, audible you can catch us there on uh, audible which is a uh, pretty neat uh, you can listen to books and you can also listen to podcasts uh, that's by subscription though but uh, it is a very neat subscription to have i actually have audible audible and it's actually a really neat service so you're welcome to catch us there on audible praise the lord so uh, those are places that you can catch us and catch all of our old uh, messages as well so it's it's a pretty neat little deal there and you're welcome to listen to us in all those different avenues and uh, that's why we make many avenues available so we can reach as many people as we possibly can praise the lord so catch us praise the lord and get the word in you praise the lord build your faith amen that's what we're supposed to be doing and that's what uh, we're here to be a blessing to you praise the lord amen amen so let's go to luke 638 real quick luke 638 and the bible says in luke 638 says give and it shall be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over shall men give unto your bosom amen that's the way god is you know if you give him anything uh, he gives it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's his law, amen. And that works on the reverse side too, unfortunately. Uh, but you know that's God's law. That's why He does things. Praise the Lord, you know. So you make sure you're given somewhere, you know. Make sure that you're given to the ministry so God can sustain you. Uh, make sure that you're given to the ministries that bless you so God can keep you having the finances you need coming into your ministry. Praise the Lord. Give, amen, and come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You're welcome to give to us too. You know, you can go to jeremiasmithministries.podbeam.com. Uh, there's no pressure to give, but you're welcome to give if you'd like to do that. But make sure, you know, he's your he's your source. Amen. You're using your faith for him because uh, that's what pleases the Lord is you're using your faith. And make sure that uh, you're letting him be your source. Amen. Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God's not mocked for whatever we, it says he will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treat away contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside for whatever a man sows. This and this only is what he'll reap. And so you want to make sure that you're sowing good things, sowing love to people. 
sow on the things you need to see, you need to sow to people praise the lord amen because it's all going to come back to you good measure press down shaking together running over amen so make sure that you're sowing the things that you need to sow praise the lord amen amen so you know let's get into the word today i hope you're excited let's grab your bible grab your tablet get your get your uh, iphone get your phone whatever you got there i know i read a lot of the scriptures off my phone and uh you know you get whatever you need to get into the word today we're going to get into our message and let's go to uh, proverbs twenty nine eighteen. and again we're talking about vision today amen proverbs twenty nine eighteen. we'll pray first father we just thank you lord for your goodness we thank you for your mercy today father and father we just ask lord that you flood us with light today father lord to teach us the things that we need to know about vision father lord and father if there's someone out there today hurting father touch them right now father and encourage them father and father we ask lord that you help them to grow and get the answers they need today father lord speak through my vocal cords father help them to hear what they need to hear today and father we just thank you father for it in jesus name and we give you all the praise amen amen Amen. Proverbs twenty nine eighteen. Let's run there real quick. You know, vision is one of my favorite subjects. I enjoy it very much. But I think uh, so many people that don't understand vision, you know, and uh, they don't understand it. And uh, a lot of people, that's why they have troubles in their households. And that's why they have troubles in their families, you know. It's because no one has vision in their homes, you know. And it's important that somebody has some vision, praise the Lord, so that home's being directed the way it needs to go. Even if you're single today, you need to make sure that you have vision or you're not going anywhere, you know. God has a vision for your life, amen. And he has a purpose for your life, but it's important that you know where you're going, amen. You know, if you take off in a ship today, you gotten into a boat, and you took off from land, if you don't know where you're going, you could end up anywhere, you know. And, uh, you know, that's what's happening to a lot of people. They don't know where they're going and they end up places they don't want to be, you know. And so it's important that you end up, you know where you're going, praise the Lord, and make sure that you have some vision in your life. Amen. Proverbs twenty nine eighteen it says it like this. He says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen. So he's saying that if you don't have any vision, you're going to, you can perish. You know, you're not going to have the things that you want in your life. Amen. You're not going to know where to go. You're not going to have an exciting future. Uh, you don't have things to get excited about in your life. You know, it's important that you have vision. Amen. You know, the most happiest people you'll find are people that have vision in their life. Amen. People that aren't very happy are people uh, uh, that don't have any vision, don't know where they're going. They're depressed and sad because they don't know where they're going, you know. And, but happy people, they see where they're going and they have some hope. Amen. Have you ever met somebody without hope? Wow, there's a lot of people today that have no hope. And it's because they don't have no vision, no dreams. And, you know, God has visions and dreams for everybody. He created everybody with that built into them, a dream and a vision. Amen. And it's important that you realize today he didn't just put you on this planet for no reason. He didn't put you here for, with no purpose. No, God has a purpose for everything he does. Amen. And he has a purpose for you and he has a dream for you and a vision for you. Amen. Go a sec like this. He says, things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter least. Wow. Think about that. You know, you should be thinking about the things that matter. Not the things that don't matter as much as you think about the things that matter. Amen. You shouldn't be putting those against Pretty things that matter least against things that do matter. I think we've all done that, you know, and it's easy to do, but you shouldn't be putting them against things that matter. You know, the things that matter should be the most important things to you, the most precious things to you. Amen. And those should be the things you get excited about, you know, things that get you up in the morning, the things that get you excited about your future. Amen. And God does have an exciting future for us, you know. The Bible says he has past prearranged, picked for you. And one translation says, live in the good life. Amen. You can find that in Ephesians. The Bible talks about that he has a good life for you. Amen. A purposeful life. A, a life with a plan. Amen. And so it's important that you're looking forward to that vision that he has for you. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we talked about uh, the first week how Jesus had tasks that are not, they're not hard. You know, he said, my burden's easy and my yoke's light. Amen. He doesn't give you tasks and challenges that he doesn't give you grace for. Amen. And he gives you grace for those things and he helps you to fulfill your purpose. And it's something that's great, has grace in it. Amen. Something he can help you with and help, you know, it's not going to be overbearing to you. 
uh, because you have the grace of God to do it. Stephen Covey said it like this, anything less than a conscious commitment to the important is an unconscious commitment to the unimportant. So, you know, you don't realize it, but even if you don't have a vision, you are going somewhere. Wow, think about that. You know, if I got on a, um, we used to get up on a uh, skateboard and we get up on the top of a hill and we go down the hill, you know. But, you know, if we don't know where we're going, we could go off the side. <laughs> and I, I don't know how many times I've hit the side and bounced off into the grass, you know, going down a really steep hill, you know. But if you don't know where you're going, you can go anywhere, you know. And unconsciously, you're going somewhere. You, even if, when you take off down that hill, you're going somewhere, <laughs> You may not go where you want to go. I, I tell a story one time in a message where I had a friend. He went down a mountain, and uh, he got up on top of the mountain, and he rode his bicycle down a very, very steep little mountain. It was a small mountain, but it was a, a mountain that he drove his bicycle down, you know, and he went down that thing. And he flipped and hit his head on the handlebars and <laughs> ended up at the end. And he got done because he, he's just a wild man, you know, wild boy. He said, let's do it again, you know. <laughs> But, you know, people are doing that. They end up places they don't want to go, you know. They go down a, a way they don't want to go. It's rougher than it should be, you know. And they end up uh, somewhere, you know, unconsciously you're going somewhere, you know. And even if you're not even thinking about it, you're going somewhere. And so it's important that we be going somewhere we want to go. Hey, man, make sure we're going to the place that we want to go. You know, be conscious of where you're going. Make sure that you know that you know where you're going. Amen. And, you know, everybody has it on the inside of them. God didn't create you without you knowing what's on the inside of you. you know, there's something on the inside of you. There's something he's talking to you about all the time. Amen. On the inside, he's speaking to us. And he's talking to you about your purpose. Amen. And you aren't, you know, you, you, you may say today, I don't know what it is. Well, what is that thing he keeps talking to you about every day you get up in the morning? What is that thing that he you can't just walk away from? You know, what is that you just, it's always on your mind, you know? Well, you know, that's part of your vision. Amen. You know, we're not talking about purpose as much today, but we're talking about vision. But that vision, you know, you see it and you say, well, man, that just looks outlandish. This is something that looks incredibly hard, you know, to get to. Well, that's because God thinks big, amen, and he'll help you get there, but he thinks big about you, you know, he has big plans for you and big dreams for you, amen, and he thinks big, he's a big God, he creates planets, amen, he, he created the Milky Way, he's a big God, amen, and so it's important that you think big like him, but it's important you know that he's there to help you to do it, and we're going to talk more about that. Miles Monroe says it like this, the poorest person in the world is a person without a dream, Amen. You know, the people that are sleeping in dumpsters and on the street, you know, they don't have to be, you know, even in that condition, you don't have to be poor. Amen. If you have a dream, that's the thing that'll get you out of that situation. That's the thing that'll get you out of where you're at. You know, it's, you know, not looking at what you're seeing around you, but you're seeing something way beyond what you're seeing in the natural eyes. Amen. One person, Miles Monroe said it like this too. He said, eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are rare. Wow. You know, you can see things with your natural eyes, but what's your spirit seeing? Amen. He's, your spirit's seeing something different. Amen. He's seeing something big. Amen. He's a big God. He sees big things. Amen. And he, to, to us, it could blow our minds some of the things that he shows us. Amen. He shows us as much as we can handle. But he can do some big things in your life if you let him do it. Amen. That finished result, that vision that you have for your life, it's big. Amen. But, you know, God will help you get there. You have to let him give you his grace to do that. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says it like this. It says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. So we're not looking at the things around us. We're looking at God's vision, God's dream. Amen. That's living on the inside of us. What are you seeing with your spirit? What is he talking to you about today? Amen. There's some things that you see that other people don't see about you. And it's because he's created you that way. Amen. Your spirit came from heaven. Your body came from earth. You're 100% spiritual and you're 100% natural if you think about it. You know, but you know, you have a part of you that sees things that other people don't see. Amen. Proverbs 29, 13. Let's look at that real quick. Proverbs 29, 13. It says, a poor person... And his oppressor have this in common. The Lord gave them eyes, both gave eyes to both of them. So it's interesting that scripture, you know, he, you see things, you know, that other people don't see with your spirit, you know. But, but he's saying, though, that the poor man and the rich man see something. Amen. 
The thing that made that person rich is what he sees. The thing that made that person poor is what he sees. Amen. So what are you seeing today? Amen. That's what we're talking about is vision. Amen. You know, it's important that we have some vision. What is it that you see that will bring you out of your circumstances? What is it you see that will fix your situation? Amen. Do you see yourself whole if you're sick? Amen. Do you see yourself prosperous if you're poor? Do you see yourself doing something great for the people around you, you know, when other people see you doing nothing, you know? What do you see on the inside of you? Amen. You know, there's big dreams inside people, big goals inside of people. What are you going to do this year that you didn't do last year? Praise the Lord. You say, well, the pandemic was last year. Well, people still did great things. Amen. Maybe there's challenges this year. You know what? There's going to be different challenges, but what are you going to do this year? What dreams can you accomplish this year? Amen. It has a lot to do with what what you're seeing amen what do you see you need to see above your circumstances beyond your natural eyes amen so you can see yourself coming out today so we're going to be talking about vision today and we said the, our definition of vision we're just recap it a little our definition of vision is seeing with your spirit what god sees about your future that's powerful to think about amen it's a function of the heart spirit to see your future amen and we said that God always finishes something before he starts it. That's why you see yourself in the future completed and you see things completed in the future. Amen. And he gives you little tidbits of those things and you'll see little things of that, you know, because, you know, he wants you to see where you're going. Amen. You know, if I was in this room today and I turned out all the lights that turned on a flashlight, you know, I could see where I'm going. I could see far away, you know, with that flashlight, you know. Well, today, you know, God's your light and he's shining in your spirit. He sees your spirit. He's the candle of the Lord that's in your spirit. And he, you can see things that other people aren't seeing because of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he's the candle of the Lord. He's living on the inside of you, lighting up your spirit so that you can see things to get excited about. Amen. Uh, John 10, 10 says that I've come to give you life. And I come to give it to you more abundantly. Amen. One uh, version that says, uh, it says a life better than you dreamed of. <laughs> Amen. I like that because he wants to give you a life better than you dreamed of. Amen. But you got to let him do it. Amen. You say, well, man, you know, some things I see in my spirit, uh, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. You know, you know, well, God knows what you enjoy better than you do. Amen. He created you. And he knows what you like better than you know what you like. You'll be surprised doing the things that God has you to do, that you, how much you'll like them and how much you'll enjoy them, praise the Lord, and get you fired up. He says, delight myself and delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And he puts those desires in you, praise the Lord. He puts those things in your heart so that you can delight in him and enjoy life. Amen. Amen. You should have some things that you're excited about, praise the Lord. Seeing what God sees, praise the Lord. It's a function of the heart, amen. And it's a it's a way that you can see beyond what you're seeing now. This is important, you know, because a lot of people can't see above where they're seeing now. Amen. And you need to see above where you're seeing now, you know, praise the Lord. See yourself doing great things, not only affect you, but affecting people around you and generations to come. Amen. You can do great things, but you got to see yourself doing it. Praise the Lord. You know, and a lot of people can't see far. You know, they just, they're so stuck with their natural vision. They can't see far. I mean, we talked about in one message about the eagle, how it sees three miles. Well, you know, so it can see its prey for three miles, you know, see a rabbit that it's going to get, you know, for food or whatever. And, you know, he sees for three miles. What are you seeing far away? Hey, man, what is he showing you that you need to be reaching for? That's your vision. Hey, man, that's the thing you should be reaching for. Praise the Lord. But what are you seeing out of your spirit? What do you see for your family? Where do you see your family going? Amen. It's important that you see the direction that you need to see. Amen. And the vision that you need to fulfill for your life. Amen. So we talked about this a little bit of a recap last week. We were talking about how God creates the environment first last week, you know, before he gave the man vision, you know, and Adam, he created an environment, you know, he said, well, Adam, you know, I'm going to put you in my presence first, you know, create an environment for him to succeed in. And then, you know, he does that with everything. He creates the environment first, you know, he created water for fish. Amen. He created oxygen, gravity. He created all the things that were needed for things to survive. You know, before he made plants, he made light. 
Think about that now. He, he creates the environment first because the environment's important. And your environment is important, amen. You need to be living in his presence to fulfill his purpose, amen. Adam needed to do that, and he was the first to creation, and you need to be doing that. You need to be living in his, his presence every day, amen. You don't function well if you're not in the right environment. That's why we got people that are holding up banks and going crazy today because they weren't created to live outside the presence of the Lord. They're supposed to be living in the presence of the Lord, amen, to fulfill the purpose that God has for their lives. You, you know, a fish doesn't survive well outside of water. <laughs> Matter of fact, it acts kind of crazy. If you ever, I've seen them up on the land, you know, and now they're just, man, they start panicking, start acting crazy when they're outside of water because they weren't created to be outside of water, you know? Plants don't survive well without sun and the right environment. I mean, they just start withering up and dying, you know, and people die quicker, you know, in the wrong environments, you know. It's because you need to be in the right environment to fulfill the purpose that God has for you. Amen. You want to, you want to fulfill God's purpose for you, you got to be in the right environment. Amen. Like I said, there's lots of people and lots of families that are struggling and challenges you know, that they have because, you know, the the uh, husband or the wife are not in the right environment. They need to be in the presence of the Lord every day. What's in that presence that's so important? Well, you know, there's love, there's joy, there's peace. Uh, it passes all understanding, amen, and there's vision, amen, the vision in the presence of God. And if you don't believe that, look at uh, the second chapter of Acts. It's the first thing that he did when the Holy Spirit came back. He told them in the prophecy of Joel, he said, I come, he gave them dreams back. And he gave them visions back, amen, when the Holy Spirit came and fell upon them, amen. So he felt that it was important that the pres the Holy Spirit came back, the helper, what did he come back to help them with? Visions and dreams, amen. That's the first thing out of the gate that they talked about. And as soon as he came back, he was going to talk to them about visions and dreams, amen. He needs you to have a dream. He needs you to have a vision to fulfill the purpose that he has for your life, amen. And he wants you to fulfill the things that he's put on your heart, what's tailored to you, amen, not somebody else's. Amen. Now, they may be going the same direction you're going, but, you know, he made you specific for a reason. Fill a certain niche, a certain a goal. Amen. And it's important that you're fulfilling that purpose and that dream that God has put on the inside of you. Amen. Well, the next thing God gave Adam was a vision. Amen. He put him in the right environment, and then he gave him a vision. Let's look at that in Genesis, the first chapter, the 27th verse here. Genesis 1, 27 he said, so God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, and it is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given you every green herb for meat, and it was so. Think about that. And God saw everything. And he had made, and behold, it was good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God gave Adam a vision statement. Amen. He spoke to him. Even before he spoke to Eve, he made him a vision. He told him what you're going to do. I want you to subdue the earth. I want you to work. I want you to do the things to cultivate this garden. You know, and Adam, you know, he saw the end of it. You know, he told him what he wanted him to do, but he didn't know exactly how to do it. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, he, this is what, what we're supposed to see in our spirits, the end. We need to see what God's wanting us to fulfill. Amen. And he did that with Adam. He told him what he wanted him to do. He's not just keeping secret your vision today. He wants you to see it. Amen. He wants you to have the vision that you need to have today. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the thoughts that be in the heart of a man, but the will of the Lord shall dwell. There be many plans in a person's heart, but the Lord's purpose shall stand, yea, it shall prevail. Amen. So all that other stuff that's in your heart, yeah, it might be good. 
Amen. And those may be your plans. But the thing that God created you to do, that's going to be the thing that prevails. That's the thing you can't get out of your mind. That's the thing you can't walk away from because he created you specifically for something. Amen. And you're not going to be able to get up every day and walk away from it. You're not going to be able to, you know, just uh, get up and be happy until you do it. Amen. That's why there's so many unhappy people, you know. I remember working in this call center with this lady and she was a little bit older. And uh, I said, man, what do you what do you want to do? What was your dream? You know, and she said, oh, I kind of gave up on that, you know, a long time ago i'm like wow that's really sad you know god's got things for everybody everything you could be doing i remember one lady i was working in a uh, christian call center with and uh, she waited till her kids grew up and she's like man i'm gonna start out on my purpose now you know well she didn't have to wait that long <laughs> but she did it and she was a little bit older and she man she went out into full-time ministry right after her kids grew up you know but she didn't give up on it, amen. And you shouldn't be giving up on your dreams and your visions, amen. It doesn't matter if you're old or young. It doesn't matter. You don't give up on your dreams and your visions. There's no retirement being a Christian, amen. I remember when Moses died, you know, and he came to Joshua. He said, well, Moses is dead. And then he just gave Joshua another assignment, you know. He didn't sit there and go, well, jo Moses retired. No, he, lived, he, had, he used Moses all the way up to the end of his life. Wow, think about that. And he's going. He wants to use you all the way up to your life. You know, you got plenty of time to bathe in the presence of God when you get to heaven. You got plenty of time to do things in heaven and enjoy living in heaven. You know, but there's a purpose you have here on this earth. Amen. The things that you're supposed to fulfill on this this earth, and time is short. Amen. It may seem long to you. But, you know, time is short on the earth, you know, and he has things he wants you to fulfill on this earth before you get out of here. Amen. Things that you're supposed to leave behind to help someone else. You know, I remember Paul, you know, and talking about his time on earth, you know, and he didn't want to leave because he said it was more needful for us for him to stay as long as he could, you know. And you think about that, you know, it's important that you stay as long as you can, not try to get out of here early. Not try to jump ship, you know, praise the Lord, that you leave something behind to help somebody else. Amen. Leave something. You can do all you can to be a blessing to other people, especially Christians, you know, and getting people saved, you know. But you can help Christians get where they need to go. Christians need the guidance that you have as, as an elder. Christians need the, the wisdom that you have as you're an elder, you know. And you need to be not trying to jump ship. You should be trying to help everybody get to fulfill their purpose. Amen. Young people shouldn't be trying to jump ship early either because the enemy is trying to trick you to lose your destiny trying to trick you to not fulfill your purpose, trying to get you with suicidal thoughts and get you to give up, you know. No, you shouldn't be trying to jump ship early because you've got a plan and a purpose that God wants you to fulfill, amen. And he's got a dream for you and he's got a vision for you and you affect people all around you, even if you don't think you do, you do. You affect people all around you and it's important that you realize that, amen. Amen. So you may have plans, but God has an original purpose for you. Adam had never subdued the earth. <laughs> he had never managed the earth, you know, but God told him that's what his future was. So he had to start figuring out some plans. Amen. Adam had to figure out how, his plan, how to do that, you know. Not sure. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly how he did it, but he had to figure it out. You know, it just didn't come naturally probably for him right off the bat, you know. And it, even if it, he was built to do that, he started having, he had to get a plan together, you know. And a seed, you know, he didn't know how to make seeds grow, <laughs> You know, he had to learn how to do all that, you know, and maybe God's given you a big dream today. Amen. And maybe there's some things you need to learn to fulfill that dream, you know, but it means that you need to start taking those steps. Proverbs 16, 9 says it like this. A man's heart devises his way, deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. So our, we're supposed to make the plan. Amen. But he'll direct the plan, amen? So he may have you change some things with the plan, you know, say, hey, I'm going to go to do this school and get better at my craft, you know, or I'm going to go do this and I'm going to get better at my craft, or maybe I'm going to do that. Well, maybe the Lord wants you to go to a certain school and maybe he wants you to do certain things. That's what we have to be open to, amen? We have to let him guide us. Hey, man, I got a whole series on being spirit led amen and so you know it'd be good for you to go back and listen to that about being led by the spirit he wants to lead you he wants to guide you excuse me there so that you'll fulfill your purpose amen and you know you need to be led about everything that you do but it's our job to make that plan 
Amen. He's not going to make that plan for you. You've got to make that plan. You know, I remember a story about one of the uh, the pastors I was listening to, how he would talk about how you've got to get the bike rolling. Amen. You know, and it's important that you get on the bike and start going some direction. Amen. And God will lead that bike and start guiding that bike where it needs to go, but you've got to get the bike rolling. Amen. So make you a plan. Start going that direction and let him lead you, you know. I remember I went to get this um, this uh, house. The Lord had put on my heart to rent a house in this certain city. And I went in there, and I just didn't feel good about it. You know, I, was like, I, don't, I told my wife, I said, I don't feel good about this one. And she's like, what? You know, I said, I just don't feel good about it. And uh, we ended up not getting that house, but the person took our deposit that we had there, and we didn't get it back, as I remember, you know. But that told me a little bit about that person's character that we were going to rent from, you know. It told me a little bit about them, <laughs> you know, that they were people that were just after our money, you know. And if we were late, you know, it may not have been a good thing. Or if, or if we had some challenges, it may not have been a good thing, you know. But the, the, I felt led in my spirit, you know, that we may have some challenges with this person. And so, you know, I ended up going another way, and we ended up really enjoying the other home a lot you know but it's important that you be led amen be led and guided by the spirit of the lord amen the bible talks about that you make the plan you need to let him lead and guide you amen so if you start going a direction and you don't feel good about it you know let him lead you you know maybe another school will work out or maybe another business you invest in will work out you know you need to make sure that you're being led and guided by the spirit amen uh, proverbs 16 9 says a man's plans his plans his way as he journeys through life but the lord directs his steps and establishes them amen and that good and he wants to direct your steps and he wants to establish you he wants you to have a good journey amen I like that uh, uh, Jerry Seville's magazine called Adventures in Faith, amen. And it is an adventure in faith. He wants to be a part of everything you do, amen. It's important that we make that plan and we let God help and guide us, praise the Lord, amen. He wants to guide you. He wants to help you and he wants to be a part of the process, amen. It's important that we let him be a part of that process, amen. I remember when I was a young man, you know, and I'm starting to uh, become a minister, I started out just taking different steps you know i would minister you know downtown to uh, the homeless i remember i actually was ministering there in a, a small church down there wasn't a very good minister but i was i was ministering you know still trying to get better at ministering you know as you get older you, you start developing certain things you know and i remember ministering and i'd do a little travel minister here and there too you know you know, but I would, uh, you know, I would just minister where I had the opportunities, you know, and I would just start taking steps towards ministry because I was called to ministry, you know, and then not too much longer, the Lord would lead me to go to Rama, you know, and he, he showed me which Bible school to go to, went to Rama, you know, developed a little bit more that way, you know, and then I ended up becoming a youth pastor, you know, learning more developing more praise the lord you know then i end up pastoring my own church for some time you know god has steps for us amen and you can enjoy the whole process we enjoy this process me and my wife you know it's fun to take those steps and step out on faith you know i didn't say i've done everything perfect you know but god leads and directs your pathway and he'll help you to stay on that pathway amen and he'll help you to fulfill the things that you need to fulfill amen Amen. It's important that you fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. Amen. So God with Adam, you know, he didn't just come along and say, hey, he gave him a plan, but he didn't just leave him either. You know, he was there in the garden with Adam, you know, and God wants to help you fulfill your purpose, you know, but he wants to do it with you. Amen. Say with me. Amen. He wants to be with you. He wants to help you. You know, you're not in this alone. But we're, need, we're supposed to do it with him. Amen. And that's where people get in trouble the most of the time is they start trying to do it on their own, you know. And we weren't meant to do it alone. Amen. Just like we had that environment, you know, with the presence of God. We're not supposed to be doing it alone. We need his presence. But we also need him all through the process. Amen. You know, and it's important to realize he's the maker. He's the creator. Amen. And you need him all along the process. You know, it's important. I was making a basketball goal for my son the other day, you know, and it'd been a whole lot easier if I just read the instructions from the, the creator of that uh, basketball goal little thing that we were creating for him, you know, to make sure it was put together right. But I, I got in a hurry and I wanted to do it myself, you know. And, uh, you know, I got all done and realized I didn't, didn't even have part of it, you know. <laughs> 
you know, and it's important that you're doing it together with the creator. Amen. He knows all the things that need to be involved in this. He knows what you need to have all through this process. Amen. And he's going to be there with you to help you to do that. First Corinthians 3, 9 says, for we are laborers together with God. Amen. We're not supposed to do it alone. We're laborers together with him. Amen. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. You know, so he wants to come along and work with you through this process. Amen. And, that, and it makes the process funner. Amen. Because you're seeing him work and you're seeing how much he loves you by fulfilling the process. And you see him in the process, you know, and he wants you to see that he's involved in it. He wants you to be established in it, you know, as you're going through the process, you know. And it's important that you see that. And you have all these wonderful testimonies as you, as he's with you that you can share with other people. Amen. She, things you can talk to them about how he's taking care of the process. Amen. I remember when I was pastor in church, it was amazing to me, you know, how the money just kept coming in and just kept coming in. We had the money for the bills every time, every month. It just kept coming in. Why? Because he's there along with the process. Amen. Amen. Doing this podcast. It's amazing to me. We have uh, people that are taking care of it and it just comes through every month. Amen. We have what we need. It's always taken care of because he's in the process. Amen. And he wants to be a part of your process and he'll be, he'll help you have, have the finances and the, and the things you need to fulfill the process when you're involved going the right direction. Amen. Hebrews 13. 5 says it for, says it like this. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. So if you got off on the process and you got off the road and you've had some challenges, he's, he hadn't left you. Amen. You know, you know how many people have had businesses that they started and the Lord's called them to business and yet they failed in so many businesses, but yet they get come back and have a good business. Well, it's because maybe they had something that went wrong or maybe they got off on the process, you know, but God never leaves you. Man, start another business. Get back up and start another one. Praise the Lord. If that's what you're called to do. If it's another church, get back up, start another church. Praise the Lord. Don't give up. Amen. Whatever it is that you failed to do and whatever challenge you've had, you know, don't give up. Praise the Lord. He's never left you. And the Bible says that, you know, he, he always has called you the same purpose. You know, he, he says, my gifts and callings are without repentance. He, he doesn't change your gifts. He doesn't change your calling. You're called to do something specific for him. Praise the Lord. And, you know, you may have screwed up today and you may have had challenges today, but that doesn't mean that he has changed your purpose. It doesn't mean he's changed what he has for your future. No, those gifts are not revoked. Amen. Those callings are still there. It's still there. It's still there in your heart. Amen. And he's got a purpose that he's trying to fulfill with you. Praise the Lord. If you'll let him do that. Amen. Amen. You know, he won't leave you. He'll never forsake you. I remember, you know, and the, and the things that, you know, God calls you to do, they're natural within you. Amen. There's something that he's called you that you're naturally able to do. And he gives you the grace for it. And it kind of flows out of you naturally. Amen. You know, God created Adam to do what he was created to do. You know, he, he created him with everything he needed to fulfill that purpose that Adam was given to him. Amen. Amen. You know, and I, even as I'm talking here, I feel like there's some people that have given up on their dreams and they've given up on their purposes. You know, don't give up on those dreams. and per God never gives up on you. Amen. He never gives up on you, praise the Lord. And you need to get back into that thing he's called you to do and that purpose he has for you, praise the Lord. Man, what he said, how many times should you forgive somebody? He said, well, seven times 70. Well, you, man, he, he forgives everybody many, many times. Amen. He, he's, and he's forgiven you and you can fulfill that purpose that he has for your life. Amen. And remember Peter screwed up three times. He, when the cock crowed three times and Peter denied Jesus. Have you done worse than that? I don't think you've done worse than that. You know, Peter denied Jesus three times, yet God came back to Peter and, and he helped Peter and he helped Peter, Peter fulfill what Peter had for his life. Think about that. Amen. You know, Peter screwed up several times, but God came back to Peter and wanted to use Peter. Amen. And you may have screwed up several times, but God will come back and he wants to use you. Amen. You got to let him use you. Amen. Amen. He, he won't give up on you. He's a good God and he loves you. And he won't give up on you, praise the Lord, because he's a good God. Amen. Amen. So that thing that naturally flows out of you. Adam had, he told him what he would have him to do. He created that purpose in it, gave him vision to him. So it was something natural for Adam, wasn't it? Something he was naturally able to do, praise the Lord. And you're supposed to be doing something you're naturally good at. Amen. I remember we were at this church. 
And uh, this lady got up to sing, and I remember me and my wife just kind of looking at each other like, man, this lady sounds terrible. <laughs> and she's up there singing. It was an elder lady, you know, not to make fun of her in any way. But it was like, ah, it was some terrible singing, just terrible singing, you know, and beautiful song, but terrible singing. <laughs> Amen, you know, and, and we were just like, dear Lord, when's this going to be over? You know, it was like, ah, this is old lady was singing, you know, and it's interesting, you know, how people get, go do things that they're not gifted to do. Amen. She shouldn't have been singing. Amen. How does that represent the pastor? And how does that represent God? When people walk in, they hear somebody going, ah, no, you need to be where you're gifted at. Amen. You need to be doing what you're gifted to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you need to be fulfilling that purpose that God has for you. You know, I remember just recently I was going through YouTube because it's Christmas and I was like, man, I'd really like to hear uh, Natalie uh, Grant, you know, sing Oh Holy Night. And uh, if you had never heard her sing that, it's a phenomenal, uh, it's phenomenal. But she sings it just out of her heart. And so when she sings, it's like natural. Now, she has two versions of Oh Holy Night. I'm talking about the old version. But uh, she would sing Oh Holy Night and she would just get into it. But I mean, she could hit all kinds of notes. Of, you almost can't believe that they're even there, you know. And she just did it naturally, and she just worshiping the Lord, and it just came out beautifully, you know, you know, and it was just natural for her, you know. And you need to be in something that you do naturally, Amen. People take notice of it. I mean, I went hunting up Natalie Grant because I took notice of it the first time I heard it, Amen. And you know that you're gifted to do things that people take notice of, and they'll go hunt you out for it because they know that you're got you've got some special gifts, Amen. Some things that you can fulfill, some things, that, some purposes that you only you can do amen and that and Allie grant only sings a certain way you know only a way that she sings amen there's a lot of great singers out there but there's ways a certain way that she sings amen and you know you have giftings and purposes like that and it's important that you make sure that you're fulfilling those purposes that god has for you proverbs 18 16 says a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth it before bringeth him before great men Amen. You know, and it's amazing. It's amazing the things that God can do with a great gift. Amen. And he can bring you before great people, you know, and you can have an impact on people that you wouldn't normally have an impact on because of your gift. Amen. And he can sit you around people that you wouldn't normally have an impact on, you know, normally in your normal environment with your gift. Amen. And it's important that you develop that gift and use that gift to glorify God. Amen. What is your vision today? What is your dream today? Hey man, you're getting ready for a new year. Look, look around you. What's your vision today? Take a look at it today. Hey Amen. What is it that you were meant to accomplish for your future? Hey Amen. Miles Monroe said, God gave us a vision so we don't have to look, live by what we see. <laughs> Are you not liking all the things you're seeing around you? Get you some vision this year. Hey Amen. Get you some dreams this year and fulfill what God has for your life. It's never too late. You know, don't give up so easily, you know, don't let the devil talk to you and get you discouraged and say, no, you, you can't do it. You're, you, you're, you're where you're at today. You know, that's what he, that's a lie of the enemy. And he, don't ever listen to him because he's lying to you. God has a vision for you. He has a plan for you. Amen. God wants you to see beyond what you see today. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And we thank you, Father, for your mercy today, Father Lord. And Father Lord, as we're praying today, Father Lord, if there's someone today, Father Lord, that really wants to fulfill their purpose for you, Father, and has a vision for you, God, help them to accomplish that dream. Help them to accomplish that vision. As they listen to this series, Father, bring out the things they need, Father, so that they have the tools they need to fulfill their purpose and their dream that you have for them, Father. And Father, we just believe it and receive it today. Father, I'm grieving with them, stretching out my faith and believing with them. And we just agree for it today in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father, for it in advance. And we give you all the praise. And if there's someone today that doesn't know Jesus, Man, if you want to fulfill your purpose, you got to have Jesus in your life. Amen. The creator who created you, you've got to have Jesus in your life. Amen. The Bible says if you believe God has raised Jesus from the dead and you confess Jesus as Lord of your life, you shall be saved. Amen. So just pray this with me. Father, I just believe that you've raised Jesus from the dead. And Father, I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. Jesus Help me to fulfill my purpose for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that, you are saved today. You know, the enemy, he'll, he'd like to convince you otherwise, but that's not the truth. You are saved. Read Romans 9 and 10. 
Romans 10, 9 and 10. Amen. That's all you have to do is do that. And you are saved. And welcome to the family. If you'd like, you can email us here at Jeremiah Smith Ministries at uh, yahoo.com. We'd love to be a lesson to you. And we love you. God bless every one of you. I hope that you have a wonderful day. If you'd like to contact us for a prayer, praise reports, or offerings, go to jeremiahsmithministries.podbean.com. Thank you for listening.